Coming up on the show, we go deeper on the ops side of enabling a DevOps approach with Azure Stack, which provides a model for developers and IT to work together throughout the building and ongoing operations of apps. We're going to show you how DevOps evolves traditional development and operations lifecycle, how you can move forward with Azure Stack, and how that approach can be applied to all of your apps in a hybrid cloud. Known today by Natalia from the Azure Stack team. Welcome. Thanks, Jeremy. Great to be here. Now, if you're not familiar with Azure Stack, it's really a new way to bring the power of Azure into your own data center. And in doing so, you can use some of the same infrastructure, the automation, developer resources that you might use in Azure in your location of choice. But more importantly, it supports modern development practices. Yeah, that's right. The key is consistency. So the things you do in Azure could translate to what you do in your local Azure Stack environment. It's the same code, and you can even mix the two environments to create true hybrid services. Now, something that we hear a lot today is the term DevOps. And most folks watching are probably on the ops side and the IT side of that. So what are we solving for here in relationship to the approach that we're taking with Azure Stack? Well, let's start by defining DevOps. It's really the merger of the application lifecycle and the operation lifecycles. To illustrate, it might help to take a step back a bit in the context of building and running an app to see why DevOps is such a powerful force in the industry. Now, I've got an app built here around a fictional healthcare company. Mm -hmm. They're trying to invest in new underserved geographies with limited network infrastructures to help manage hospital. It really is to help them move from a paper to digital business. So the hospital information system has rich features to effectively manage the complexity of hospital operations. Um, this app can manage patients, appointments, imaging, medication, really everything required to manage the electronic medical records and logistics in a hospital. Now, the application runs in Azure Stack. So if we go to the Azure Stack portal, you can see that the instance of the hospital run is running in the Azure Stack cloud. If we look at the resources from the infrastructure perspective, all the resources to run this application are here in Azure Stack. To build this type of robust application, we need people. Mm -hmm. People to understand healthcare specific features, developers to write the code and make sure it works. We need people to buy the infrastructure hardware, set it up, management, and people to ensure the system continues to operate like it's supposed to. And this is true kind of for any app development project. How is this done today? I'm going to talk in really broad strokes here. You have the development team on one side that understands the workflow, they identify requirements, and ultimately, they put that into code. They're typically paid to complete the feature work on time and with quality. And then I think we all know how this goes. They throw that work over the fence to us, the IT operations team. We've got to pick up all the pieces and kind of determine how everything gets running. Yeah, that's when the operation teams takes over. <laughs> they read the documentation on how that works. And sometimes there's not always documentation for that. So again, we have to figure this out. Yes, and they get it running and keep it operational. For the ops team, reliability, compliance, and financial management really become their main focus. As a result, devs don't need to access the infrastructure resources unless there's a critical issue, and IT is focused on uptime or they're in break fix mode. And part of the the kind of the outfall of all this is IT is kind of left alone. If something if something is broken, they've got to figure out how to fix it. And a lot of times, the devs have actually moved on. So, how does this now change and get better with DevOps? Well, DevOps removes the barrier between developers and IT, and then it unifies efforts around the customer experience. So if we reorder the life cycle so the developers continue to be accountable for the app. So IT is aligned from the beginning in defining and supporting application resources. So that means we can build and deliver reliable applications faster and with higher quality. Now you'll see the support has moved to the front of the cycle. It's no longer just the IT related break fix kind of help desk function, but it focuses on supporting a great customer experience. That includes ongoing customer requirements management, shipping new features and functionality, application monitoring through telemetry, automation, et cetera. DevOps continues to iterate with customers through the entire development lifecycle, creating a hypothesis on functional requirements. So really, it's a virtual feedback cycle. Apps are also instrumented to get data on usage patterns, failure, et cetera. So support can be proactive, not just reactive. And since developers are really on the hook to support their own code, they're probably going to be incented to make sure their code doesn't break. And IT can also better understand the requirements. So what's the next phase? Well, next, the develop and build phases are merged. 
So there are a lot of DevOps practices. One of the key DevOps practices that makes this possible is the introduction of infrastructure as code. That allows developers to get their infrastructure from a cloud. They build the environment they need as a code artifact and create the exact same thing from dev to test to production. With infrastructure as code, the infrastructure becomes part of the app. So bringing us back then to what we're delivering with Azure and Azure Stack, our Azure Resource Manager templates, really the automation, the mechanism that lets you deliver infrastructure as code. Yeah, that's right. It gives IT the ability to work with developers to automate and monitor the assignment of app resources and set guardrails and policies for the app. Developers can easily see the resources available to them and continue to use their preferred code management tools, things like Git or Visual Studio Online. Okay. All right, so let me go back to our hospital application to illustrate. So merging the app code and the infrastructure code has huge benefits. So here's the ARM JSON template that describes the infrastructure building blocks mm -hmm. needed to get that hospital app up and running. Right. If you look, all the resource specification app are here. So you've got things like storage, We've got network profile, and then we've got some of the VMs down here. An ops team can additionally add management functionality. So if I drill into the template, I can add the operations management suite workspace into the code for the app. So that means every time the resource is created from this pattern, it'll be brought under management. So here, I have the same ARM template that for the hospital application, mm -hmm. but we've added a snippet of code that installs and configures OMS. Okay. okay, so I can see the OMS agent install and workspace. Yeah, so look how little code it takes to make sure the resources are managed. If we go back to the Azure portal, we can see that the management extension that the ops team can use to make sure that the application is managed, and that asset is managed. So here you can see we've got the OMS agent for Linux there. Okay. That's the beginning of managing inventory and availability and spend on the application. Now, if I switch over now to the OMS workspace, so here we're in the OMS workspace that we previously configured, mm -hmm. you can see that the application's under management anytime it's deployed, and that means anywhere in the world, whether that's in Microsoft's data centers, an enterprise data center, or with a service provider offering Azure Stack. The consistency enables the same skill set to manage the applications in Azure or in Azure Stack. So the nice thing is here, the ARM template's really a blueprint. Every time I provision that app, I'm going to have the same management everywhere. So this is really great. Now devs actually get what they need from an ops perspective. I, from the IT pro perspective, get what I need and visibility into what the devs are actually building. Um, and I can see who's using stuff, what the resources they're consuming, and at which rate they're consuming. But what happens then after developing and building? Well, then we consolidate test and stabilize phases of the life cycle. So you want to test code and stabilize the infrastructure. So here, we'll do more automated testing, and we're adopting continuous integration and deployment. That gives us more agility. So let me show you automated testing. So here, since we're building the cloud, we can automate testing of both the app code and the infrastructure code at the same time. Here, as you can see, we're in Jenkins. That's our app integration service. Mm -hmm. We configured it to deploy and test our infrastructure. This is the deployment output from the template that we showed earlier. Okay. So you can see, that it succeeded, the deployment succeeded. So it's basically a log of what happened. Yep, that's the log. And at the end, we can actually see the test results. Since this is exceeded in Azure Stack, we can deploy the same code to Azure and vice versa. That's the value of the consistent platform. And it's really a great place for IT then to bring your knowledge in and expertise about the build process. Because all those years that you spent hydrating out dev test environments, building all those task sequences, educating devs and other infrastructure folks on your team, that really comes in handy here, and maybe you'll get a few less emails for reproing stuff that's broken. Yeah, you invest in automation because you know that it's going to work wherever you choose to deploy. The feedback can be provided to the development team to improve the code and to the ops team so they know what's coming. Since we used OMS to manage this, we can track inventory and spend for every phase of the life cycle. That way, everyone can focus on what they're good at. Ops can focus on the operational integrity of the system, and the developers can focus on the functional quality collaboratively. And of course, since we're using the cloud, we can actually dial up and dial down resources as required and really use its elasticity. Yeah, you can use subscriptions in our back in Azure to control access to the resources too. Now the last piece to think about is the merger of maintain and deploy. Now the way to think about this is continuous deployment and continuous maintenance. 
We have ongoing configuration management, availability, monitoring, and importantly, placement. Since everything till now has been tested, placement of the app becomes a business decision, whether it's in Azure with a service provider or in an enterprise instance of Azure Stack. And everyone gets visibility when something goes wrong. Right, and the nice thing is, because we just saw what, what Natalia did to get the OMS agent running, it's just built in. So every time I run this ARM template, it's going to come under management, and we can have complete visibility into that environment. Yeah, so let me show you how to configure placement using ARM. Now, if we go back to Visual Studio Online, if the app has a geographical requirement, and that's sometimes data sovereignty laws or latency or mm -hmm. something like that, you can simply place the app on Azure Stack. Now here, in our hospital app that we saw before, we've configured it to run in different locations. In this case, everything has been tested and we're ready to put the app in the hospital. We just choose where the components of the app or service run. We call it placement. So here you can see a few locations. You've got Brazil, Melbourne, Mumbai, New Zealand, Poland, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's lots of ways to deploy, but in this case, we chose Visual Studio Code. You could have even used PowerShell. And here we're using VS Code. It's a really great place to start if you're an IT pro. There are even extensions that can help you author your own PowerShell scripts and do everything that we've seen here. So now you've seen how Azure Stack and Azure can help with the DevOps approach, and it really unifies that development and operations workflow. Yeah, it also provides additional flexibility and deployment options, giving you another way to match requirements for unique workloads or situations. You can use the same tools and modern methods to build your apps, no matter which cloud you target. So how would people get started today in doing all this stuff? Well, I'm very excited. We just released Azure Stack TP3. So the best way to get started is to team up with your developers and start prototyping your apps in Azure and then validating in Azure Stack. You can download it at the link below. You can also learn more about how to collaborate with your developers at this link. It's really great stuff. Thanks for joining us today, Natalia. So try it out. Let us know what you want to know more about and start using it today. And as always, keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest updates across Microsoft. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.